Hey everybody, welcome to another solo episode of uh, Nerds Drink Whiskey. Today, I am reviewing Old Grandad. So, uh... Old dude! Old dude! Yeah, it's, uh... I've been, as you can tell, you know, consuming on this for a couple days. Uh, I definitely am starting to notice a difference in certain whiskeys. Uh, you can't judge, judge them on the sip right after you open it up. Uh, it seems like after a couple days, after you've taken a couple sips, uh, maybe the, maybe like the air gets in there from you pouring it, you know, but after a couple pours, it, it seems to change the taste a little bit so uh i'm not i'm gonna try not to review whiskeys right out of the right fresh out of the bottle anymore but uh i'm gonna pour myself just a little bit here and uh using a uh little fancier glass here so we can uh fit on the nose if you ask me not to mention repetitive And there's definitely a little bit of spice, but uh, very strong fruit, uh, smelling just a touch of uh, apricot, apricot, but mostly uh, probably a little bit more pear and definitely a lot of apple. So uh, this is uh, 80 proof, uh, Kentucky bourbon, straight bourbon. So uh, I don't know. I forgot to look, but I don't see that, uh, I don't see that they're saying anything about age. So this is a no age statement whiskey other than saying straight bourbon whiskey. So, uh, since it is straight bourbon whiskey, uh, that means it has been aged at least two years. Um, and if it says bonded, it's been aged four years. So this is probably real close to two years. If, if it was any more than two years, they, they would probably put the age on the bottle. So, let's, uh, Dark Hellman, do your thing. Ludicrous speed! <gasps> the, uh, the rye uh, really adds just a nice spice to it here. Uh, they've done a very good job on on uh, putting the rye in there, uh, knowing how to use the rye to uh, just kind of accent everything. Uh, there is a little bit of a, so there is a little bit of a spiciness to it. Um, there's a, in the, in the in the taste and in the uh, there's not a real strong taste, but there is a real strong finish, and I do like how much it lingers a little bit. Uh, a lot of whiskeys uh, may have a real strong finish, uh, but uh, it fades real quickly. This one lingers a little bit, and I, I do, I am impressed by that. Um, what really impresses me on this whiskey is the price. 17 bucks. And to have a whiskey that's only $17, a bourbon that's $17, and that isn't turpentiny. Uh, it has a, a real good finish, better, better finish than a lot of $80 whiskeys. Um, that's, that puts this on, uh, a, a list that in well over 200 episodes, uh, we have now three whiskeys on our under $20, extremely high recommend list. Recommend alert one. Recommend alert one. Recommend alert one. And this is, uh, this is one of them. Um, have I had better whiskeys? Absolutely. Have I had better whiskeys that were under $20? There's only two others that, uh, really are, are even in that category as far as I'm concerned. So if, uh, if you want a good solid whiskey, uh, that is not going to break the bank at all. Uh, I say this, this old granddad is, is, is surprisingly good. I, I bought it cause 
I kind of missed, you know, totally thrashing on a whiskey. I wanted to do a really negative, comically, you know, mocking a whiskey, you know, and so this is 17 bucks. I figured, okay, yeah, that's going to, that'll, that'll definitely fit the, fit what's needed. And, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, I actually like it. It's impressive for the price, uh, extremely high recommend. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, part of the, uh, uh, Beam Centauri family. Your family? The wizard family. Dobby Surf, sir. Uh, so this, this guy on the bottle is Basil Hayden himself. And this is not called the Basil Hayden. So this is kind of like a really cheap Basil Hayden. Um, kind of like if you buy uh, Weller's instead of Pappy. Uh, it's the same thing. It's just cheaper label and one one didn't get the right one did one barrel didn't make the cut so they put one label on one barrel and one label on another and uh so this is uh this is how you get uh basil hayden's uh with uh for for 17 bucks is uh get it as old granddad um anyways super high recommend uh i think i'm gonna enjoy finishing that bottle especially now that i know that it's only 17 dollars like at first I was drinking it and I just thought like, oh, it's probably normally priced, probably 60, 80 bucks. And I was just kind of like, oh, it's okay. But now that I know that it's $17, now I'm highly impressed by it. So uh, anyways, uh, keep in mind that in March, uh, throughout the month of March, we are doing a deep dive uh, on uh, a lot of people's favorite Irish whiskey, uh, which is Redbreast. So uh if you want to know about red breast, know about what we feel about the different expressions of red breast. Oh, oh, Jen, it's um, it's an expression. Uh, make sure to come back to this channel in March. Uh, also, uh, me and my little brother have launched a new podcast uh, that'll be all through all the same channels. Uh, you can go to nerdsdreamwhiskey.com/brothers, and it's a podcast called Long Lost Brothers. Uh, so, uh, I had not until recently, I had not spoken to my little brother. Uh, we had been, uh, separated for well over a quarter of a century. And, uh, now we're, uh, doing a podcast together where we just talk about different pop culture stuff. Some of the more nerdier stuff you used to hear about on this thing, sometimes a little bit more longer form conversation. And, uh, we're hoping at some point to get guests on, but, uh, yeah, go in, subscribe to that. And uh, if you're already subscribed to Nerds Drink Whiskey on YouTube or uh, on Facebook, uh, you'll get the same video. But uh, that is actually my little brother, Patrick. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's great being able to do a podcast with my little brother. It's, I, I love that. So uh, see you next week for another episode of Nerds Drink Whiskey. And uh, see you Sunday uh, for an episode of Long Lost Brothers.